Well, it's August 1st, crying out loud. It's August 1st, 2017. It's Mike Messier. Another day of being a white man in America as this car is right on me, driving very slowly behind me, aggravating me. I'm in Strip Mall, USA, New England variety. Uh, you know, between a coffee shop and a bookstore, imagine that. And um, as the headline may or may not read, Conor McGregor, my prediction, and it's only a prediction, Conor McGregor, a three-punch knockout over Floyd Mayweather in the sixth round. Now, what is a three-punch knockout? Three quick punches, say uh, right, left, right, or left, right, right, but whatever the fuck. I'll say it ends on a uh, left hand. To the face, uh, you know, hooks, uppercuts, whatever you want to fucking call it. We'll call it a left hook to end the fight. To the face. Now, why do I make this prediction? And first of all, I'm going to go through some scenarios. But I wanted to give you the quick version first. Six-round knockout, meaning a legitimate standard knockout. Knock to the canvas and can't get up for the count of ten. Uh, not a TKO where the ref stops it. Uh, for the safety of the fighter, but he actually does count to 10, and, uh, you know, Floyd can't get to his feet and present himself for the 10-second mark. Maybe he'll get to his feet and just be glassy-eyed, and the referee will stop. What I'm saying, basically a knockout, not a TKO. Uh, for true boxing aficionados, you can split hairs on that type of deal. Um, now, let's talk about this fight, or I'll talk about the fight, and you listen if you actually watch this. Um, first of all, is this rigged? Is this predetermined? Uh, you can make a case for that. Floyd Mayweather, uh, Money Mayweather, who I'm not a big fan of, um, has been known to involve himself in predetermined sport, you know, quote, sport, quote, events, even combat sports, I guess is the new catchphrase of the fucking day uh, for Mayweather Productions and Dana White and UFC to, to put a label on this thing. Uh, if you look at WrestleMania, whatever the fuck, in Orlando about nine years ago, I think it was 2006, uh, maybe 2007, I think it was 2006, uh, the big show, uh, Paul White, I believe is his name, uh, seven foot tall, at the time, 450 pound wrestler, huge guy, nice guy actually, uh, fought Mayweather in a wrestler versus boxer. Of course, everyone knew going into that that, that was a predetermined uh, thing, but um, if you look back at that footage, you can see that it was actually uh, pretty well orchestrated, pretty well uh, choreographed, pretty entertaining. And um, to be honest, I used to be a huge boxing fan in my youth, my youth, but I've really fallen out of favor with it. Floyd Mayweather was of a generation when I had stopped watching boxing. I really wasn't into it. If anything, I kept an eye on certain guys like Bernard Hopkins was a favorite. I liked his story. I liked his bravado. Um, I did like seeing um, Tarver Jones, uh, the Antonio Tarver I liked, who uh, essentially was robbed of a decision over Roy Jones Jr. and then knocked him out. Second fight, I think they even fought a third time, but I could be wrong. Um, my point being this. I am not an aficionado or an expert on Floyd Mayweather. I... Just didn't find him uh, maybe a size thing. I just didn't find him, you know, someone I wanted to watch. From what I heard about his fights, some were good, some had flurries. He was never truly, I guess he was tested a few times, a couple of decisions. Uh, but really, he was not a guy that really engrossed me or got my attention uh, as a casual fan, as kind of a cynical, angry, former boxing fan. Floyd Mayweather is someone I'm not an expert on, but I will say this. Looking at these two guys, why do I say Conor will win? First of all, if it's fixed, if it's rigged, predetermined, if they agree to a decision, uh, if they agree on a game plan, <clears throat> I think Floyd is smart enough, even with all his faults, to realize <clears throat> the money on this thing is really, if he's going to, if it's, and it's interesting to note that it's Mayweather Productions, if he's a promoter of this thing and I'm his father, then why not invest money into Conor winning? allowing Connor to beat him, and then securing a percentage of Connor's future earnings on either a rematch or another fight, maybe a boxing match against Nate Diaz or something, if they can put their financial uh, finger 
into Conor McGregor's asshole, so to speak, to be violently uh, blunt and visual, uh, then they're doing pretty well for themselves. Uh, so that's if it's rigged. Uh, the other thing is if it's rigged and they have Conor win, there's more interest in a, in a rematch for the most part. If, you know, the, I think the boxing analysts get a little too, uh, they want to see this thing as actually being legitimate all the, all the way or not even opening to the idea that Floyd might, you know, throw this thing or make it close or whatever on purpose. Uh, that being said, another reason to have Conor win is it just it's the better story. Uh, now if we're talking about, now here's a mix of rigged and legitimate, shoot, as they say in pro wrestling. Uh, and we'll get to the wrestling aspect of this in a minute, or I will, you'll listen, is what, if it's, if it's real legitimate fight of some kind, why would I say that a guy who never fought professionally before in a boxing environment, why would he win? Why would he be my pick? And why would he be my pick? I would say because the crazy factor, the X factor, and also the youth advantage. I think people are overlooking that or not discussing it. Uh, they're looking at Floyd many way better. They're seeing a guy who looks to be in great sh shape physically. Uh, in his career as a somewhat attractive uh, female going to work over there, uh, but they look at Floyd Mayweather and they don't see a guy who's uh, fat or obese or, or out of shape or punch drunk or, or you know, beaten up too much. So they think, oh, he's great shape. But th th my point is this. I don't know how many fights he's fought, 49 professionally and probably more amateur, obviously, and training and, and all that stuff. He's taken enough punches to the head. He's been through the game long enough that it's taking a wear and tear on him. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. I don't care who you are. Um, if you've taken physical abuse as a professional athlete from other professional athletes, in this case boxing, yeah, there's going to be some residual damage, you know, 49 fights into this thing. Uh, I believe he hasn't fought by the time we get to this thing in two years. I saw the Manny Pacquiao fight and, you know, he got through it. But the reality is, I think Floyd is going to have some type of residual 40-year-old guy, 49 fight damage. And I don't think you can get around that, no matter how you want to talk your way out of it. Uh, now, t a guy like Tom Brady or, or you know, we had George Foreman who fought to almost 50 years old, and I think Hopkins fought and won championships in his 50s. So there are exceptions. But I think that, for the most part, even those great fighters, Hopkins lost a lot of fights when he got to be in his 40s, as did Foreman. So I think, you know, blah, 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 Rocky Balboa, Father Time is undefeated. I think that's a, a factor of this thing that people aren't talking about. You have, like, a 13-year advantage for Connor. I don't think it's a thing where... Being, it's on a shower in Monk. I don't think being a boxer at 40 is helpful. The other thing is I think people are underestimating uh, Conor McGregor's one punch out, one knockout punch, whatever the fuck. He's, he's actually a pretty big guy for 170. If you've seen him at these press conferences and he, he took his uh, jacket off, he was huge. His upper body was huge. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. But I think he does have punching power. He did have that one knockout victory over Jose Aldo who's not a chump in any regard. So I think that people are kind of looking beyond the fact that one punch, uh, you know, if you're, in the guy, if you're in a ring with 12 rounds, I think there's a chance to hit a guy once. I think Connor's young enough, quick enough, he's good enough with the standing game, whatever you want to call it, to hit the guy at least once. And I think it might just take one or, one or two good punches. Uh, a 27, 28-year-old guy hitting a 40-year-old guy, whatever gloves they wear, I, I think there's something to that. Uh, also, kind of going back to the rigged thing versus just also pop culture, the history of the world. Uh, what was it? Billie Jean King and uh, Bobby Riggs, you know, which which apparently wasn't even the first time uh, Riggs played. Children are looking at me oddly because I'm doing this fucking vlog. But it wasn't the first time that, that he, uh, Bobby Riggs, I guess, fought a woman or played a woman in tennis. It was actually the second time on national television. That was before my time. But it's a better story if the upset happens. It's a better story that Billie Jean King won. It's a better story that Dice, uh, Douglas beat Tyson. And anyway, we talk about that all day. That was legitimate, I think. But in this day case, there's no story if Mayweather wins. It's not a story. It's, it's a, uh, okay... Nobody likes Mayweather. Mayweather knows nobody likes him. Uh, it's to Mayweather's advantage to lose gallantly or to lose like he was. And, I, and I'll say this. I think fixed or not, I think Mayweather, and I'm hoping, maybe hoping more so than knowing, Mayweather fights a more aggressive fight. I do think that 
if there's anything to be gained in this madness for Mayweather, it's to be aggressive. It's to step up his game. It's to take this chump out as he would see it or his fans would see it. I think the only way you do that is by a knockout early, which might increase Mayweather's aggression. Now, one thing I've, I've been studying some of these fucking videos, and people say that Mayweather doesn't have the punching power that you would want for a, for a knockout, and I think that might be something as bravado, he might want to prove that he can knock this guy out, this tattooed freak with a horrible chest tattoo, meaning Connor, uh, that gremlin or whatever the fuck it is, just a god-awful tattoo on his chest. Um, so my thinking is Mayweather's going to come out. I'll say he'll win four out of five or, or, or the first five rounds. And, and let's, say he, let's say he wins... I'll say he wins the first round, Connor wins the second round, three, four, and five go to Mayweather. Sixth round, Mayweather's winning, you know, on eyeball test. And, and Connor knocks his fucking ass out. With, at two minutes and 36 seconds into the, the sixth round, Connor gets the knockout. Now, that's my prediction. The fun thing with predictions is if you predict something and you're right, especially, you know, 25 days away from the fight, you seem like a genius. If you predict something and you're wrong, nobody cares because every asshole and his mother's going to make a goddamn prediction. <clears throat> that all being said, was there anything else I was going to babble about this thing? Ah, Connor making weight. I think if anything derails this fight, if there's a shred of legitimacy to this thing that could really be a bones, slugs, and harmony uh, situation to throw a bone in this closet of madness, can Connor McGregor make weight? Can he make, and I think they agreed on 154, and apparently Connor walks around at 170. Well, 16 pounds for a professional boxer is doable. But we're talking three weeks away from the fight. And when I saw these two guys on their little press conference tour, which was a big joke, um, you saw that Connor was having a great time. But it's like, dude, you're going to lose 16 pounds in a month. And I don't care if you're my size or Connor's size or anybody's size. Losing, <clears throat> losing 16 pounds in three or four weeks is not easy. And I know that these are professional fighters, blah, blah, blah. But if you ever watch anything about boxers training or even The Ultimate Fighter, which is a show that I still enjoy, you see that losing fight, you know, losing weight, cutting weight is very difficult for anybody. And to do that under the pressure and the stress of doing these press conferences and so forth and so on, I think that might throw a monkey wrench. And so what you could have here is everything I just said about Connor winning in the sixth, but the big asterisk being that Connor didn't make weight. So Connor goes into this thing at 156, 158, or 159. Floyd's 153 and a half. And then at the end of the day, if Connor wins, Floyd will say, well, that guy was, you know, 168, two, you know, 170 when I fought him. He, he cheated. You know, he didn't make weight. I'm the real winner. And then they have that as the big fucking asterisk in the ass for this whole goddamn thing. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, or maybe not, is um, how to see this fight. Do you even want to see this fight? I would say this to anybody, including myself. If you have anything else to do, on August 26th, that's going to make your life better. I'll repeat myself because that van went by me. If you have anything else, uh, anything else to do in your damn life to make your own personal life better, whether you're an actor or a, a book writer or a person who writes journalism or a person who does fucking anything, I would say consider doing something else on August 26th. I'm not saying boycott, you know, like fucking... Uh, what's his dick? De La Hoya did. And I, I kind of thought when De La Hoya said boycott this thing, they would bring up uh, De La Hoya's cross-dressing past. Um, but if you have anything else to do on August 26th, I would say go ahead and do it to progress your own life. Because these two assholes don't need our money. You have one guy who is a legitimate woman beater. Uh, one guy who says very offensive things. Connor. I mean, they both do. Uh, so it's not a fight, and they're having trouble selling tickets to this thing. So I don't personally see that we owe these assholes anything. Um, but that being said, I probably won't have anything better to do. Uh, in my local vicinity of uh, wherever the fuck, there's a movie theater playing the fight, the Showcase Cinemas. And I've done this. I've gone to see boxing and UFC in the movie theater on the closed circuit. It's actually quite fun. So I'd say that. You can go to your local casinos, uh, Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, is having the fight simulcast. You can pay 30 bucks. The movie theater's 40 bucks. You don't have to stay home like a fucking leper and pay $100, no offense to lepers, and pay $100 to watch this damn thing, or $99. So I would say, if you do want to see the fight, watch the fight. 
I also would say hopefully they have a good undercard. Then no one's talked about the undercard. Will it be legitimate boxing fights? Will they do some other weird hybrid shit? Uh, the commentators, we haven't heard who they're going to be. Uh, maybe they could get JBL and Moro, whatever the dick from fucking wrestling to come out together. That'd be funny. If you're a wrestling fan, you know why. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about is the historical... There's actually a precedent for this type of engagement, combat sports. Uh, look up Muhammad Ali versus Antonio Inoki. Those two guys went into a wrestler versus boxer thing, I think in 76, an early promotion of Vince McMahon Jr., you know, nine years before WrestleMania. I think it was 76 or 78, and basically, they didn't have a script, so they kind of forgot. They did all the promotion, I believe, but I could be wrong, this was when Muhammad Ali was banned from legitimate boxing, so he did a wrestler versus boxer thing versus Antonio Noki, kind of the predecessor of WrestleMania in some ways, and all these wrestling promotions did all these big shows, and they forgot to give, as an undercard, and they forgot to give Muhammad Ali and, and Noki, the Japanese wrestler, a script. Um, to, to follow, so they didn't agree on anything. It turned out to be a big cluster fuck 15 round draw. And if you think about it, Anoki legitimately kicked Ali's legs for 15 rounds. And by the time Ali was out of there, he probably had some residual damage to his legs that he probably never fully recovered from, thus leading to him losing to Joe Frazier in the first Fra Frazier fight. So, in a way, people don't talk about that, but I just did. Um, other spectacles, you've had things. Going back to the Primo Canera days of pro wrestling, and, and I think Primo was a boxer wrestler. Things before my time, before your time, in Japan, K1, weird stuff. You've had a lot of weird mixed martial arts fights with wrestlers and boxers and Bob Sapp and, and all types of freaks. The Kurgan, all types of huge guys um, that probably didn't make a lot of sense unless you're familiar with this weird stuff. What I'm saying is they're making a big deal about this thing. But it's not necessarily the first time that this type of weird hybrid fight is happening. Um, a guy, you know, guys like Joe Rogan and, and Jim Lampley, who I respect a lot, especially Lampley. I like Lampley. Um, I, and I wonder what Larry Merchant's thinking if he's still alive about this madness. But anyway, I will probably see the fight August 26th. So once again, Conor McGregor, I think I've covered all the bases on this damn thing. Uh, as far as betting goes, I don't know. If it's something that, you know, do you really want to win or lose money on this ridiculousness? Maybe you do. I think the smart move is to bet on Connor because if you get odds in your favor, it's just more exciting to say you won on that guy. But overall, I'm going to hang up now and, and enjoy your damn day. MikeMessier.com, The Nature of the Flame, Married is Bliss, uh, Disregard the Vampire, a Mike Messier documentary preview, all the wonderful things. Go to MikeMessier.com. Blah, blah, blah. That's it. Bye.